Hello, welcome to Meet Your District Supervisor. I'm Nona Melkonian, and we're here with Supervisor London Breed from District 5, which includes the Inner Sunset, Haight-Ashbury, Lower Haight, Western Edition, Japantown, and part of Hayes Valley. Supervisor Breed is one of two new supervisors elected in 2012. Today we'll get to know her and talk about the toughest issues facing the city. Welcome, Supervisor. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Let's start by talking a little about your background where you grew up, went to school, and the kind of jobs you've had in the past. Well, I grew up in the heart of the Western Edition. I grew up in public housing in the Western Edition. My grandmother raised me and my brothers, and I went to public schools here in the city. Um, ended up at UC Davis and graduated and immediately returned back to the community and started working for the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services uh, and worked on Treasure Island. And eventually, I became the executive director of the African American Art and Culture Complex located in the Western Edition community, a place that I participated in programs in the arts as a kid. And so it was really an honor to uh, be able to work directly in the community to impact so many lives. And um, I really um, thoroughly enjoyed that experience. Well, you've lived most of your life in San Francisco. Why did you choose to live in the city? I chose because it's my home. It's, it's the place I love the most. Uh, I pretty much uh, only lived outside the city when I went to college and I, I came home almost every weekend on the Greyhound bus and um, I, I just love San Francisco. It's an amazing place. It's a beautiful city. It's nothing like coming across that bridge and seeing the city and feeling like I'm home or coming from any part of anywhere, whether you're on a plane, whether you're on a bus, whether you're in a car, just to see the skyline of the city. It just always made me feel at peace. And so I can't imagine myself living anyplace else. And what motivated you to get involved in politics? Well, um, I, as I said, I grew up in public housing and um, I experienced a lot of um, sad times as, uh, as uh, some people are still experiencing, whether it's crime and violence and issues of despair, issues of hopelessness. I mean, that still continues to plague many of our public housing residents today. And so it's really challenging when this is the way that I've pretty much spent most of my life. Um, and when I think about the challenges people are still uh, going through, I know that the only way to make changes to those type of issues is to actually be a part of the decision-making body of this city. And so what motivated me in the past has always been about making sure that I wasn't the only one that had an incredible opportunity to participate in the city, to have a, a great life in the city. I felt like there were too many of my peers um, that should have had this same opportunity and so it's a big reason why I decided to participate in politics. You mentioned you were the executive uh, director of the African American Arts and Culture um, Complex. How has that experience as well as the experience of serving on two commissions prepared you for the Board of Supervisors? Well, I, I did serve on the San Francisco Redevelopment Agency Commission and the Fire Commission, and uh, I was really fortunate to run this great center. And all of those experiences, running a nonprofit, being on a commission, working for the city, responding to constituents, doing the kinds of things that many folks are doing every single day to make our city better. I mean, I don't see a better preparation than that for becoming a city supervisor. Um, the nonprofit world is a very, um, challenging community to work in because of the fundraising involved, because of the need for such great programs. And so to be in the middle of that and to advocate for an incredible community asset, to work with city departments, to obtain funding, I mean the list goes on and on. So over the years I've been fortunate to develop some incredible relationships with city department heads and other city commissioners who helped me to do some of the great work I've been able to do in the community. So it's somewhat of a natural progression and I think all of that entailed uh, really helped me to be, it's going to help me in my role as supervisor and it helped me to actually get here. Well the District 5 race for supervisor was an especially eventful one this time around. What did you learn amidst all that controversy and all that competition? I think that what I learn is that we have an incredible district of people who can see what's genuine, who can see when someone really cares and has the heart for the community. And I think that was demonstrated in who they decided to elect. I mean, regardless of personalities or ideology or what have you, people know 
when you really care. And I think that came across in my campaign. And so what I learned is to respect the voters and respect how they feel about candidates, whether it's me or anyone else, I want to make sure that they are given the options and they are able to make the choice that they choose and, and that once the election is over, we move on and do what we need to do to make our city better. Where do you place yourself on the political spectrum? Are you more progressive, centrist, or more on the conservative side? Uh, that's a really challenging question because, I mean, throughout the campaign, I made sure that I didn't define myself as either because I think that what it does is, in a lot of ways, it divides our city. I think clearly um, when you have a desire to run, you have a desire to serve, you really care about what happens in San Francisco, you just have a different way at which you believe we should go about doing that. And I just think that I don't necessarily see myself in one particular category because I have different feelings about different situations based on my various experiences of growing up in the city. And so my, my, my commitment to San Francisco trumps any ideology I might have. I mean, I'm gonna need to make decisions that impact people's lives. And so I have to make sure that I'm being responsible in those decisions and I, I can't let ideology get in the way of that. And it seems the city is always dealing with complicated issues, as you mentioned. What do you feel are some of the biggest issues facing San Francisco right now? I think there are a few big issues, but in particular, my priority is public housing. Um, the fact that it's a neglected community is really um, a problem for me. The fact that they're still dealing with rodent infestation and some of the challenges of, of job opportunities. I, I think this city is a wealthy city. We spend a lot of money on social services in our city, but why are these social services not impacting people's lives in a way that it's changing people's lives for the better? So I wanna make sure that we work with residents and we work to help them grow within public housing and to not be priced out of the city as a result. I think that's one of the big issues. The other issue is connecting people to job opportunities, long-term employment, stable employment, employment that that gives people dignity, that gives them pride. I mean, everyone wants to take care of their family. And sadly, people are sometimes pushed into a life of crime because that's the easy route to obtaining money. I mean, it was really easy for me as a kid to choose to sell drugs because everyone around me was selling drugs. It wasn't easy for me to get a job because I didn't have a lot of examples of people working other than my grandmother who was working as a maid or other folks I saw working at the grocery store. So for me, I just felt like, okay, well, drugs is easier. You can easily go out on the corner and stand and sell drugs. Um, but luckily, um, because of the Mayor's Youth Employment and Training Program, I got a job at age 14, started working at the family school, working with some incredible people. And because of that opportunity, I'm here today. And I think we need to make these opportunities more readily available to folks in public housing. And you mentioned working on the Redevelopment Commission for five years. Um, now that the state has eliminated redevelopment agencies, do you think that the Board of Supervisors and the mayor is really doing enough to serve the city's housing needs? Well, I think you can never do enough. I mean, there's still a lot of folks that are homeless, but I do think that San Francisco is leading the way to innovative policies that can really help change things for the better uh, post redevelopment. I think that the Affordable Housing Trust Fund is a, a step in the right direction, and it's something that no one else is doing all over the state. I think that the fact that San Francisco is so committed to affordable housing, we already had um, resources where we were invested in affordable housing in the city, but more importantly, we're looking at revamping public housing and how that fits into the bigger picture of affordable housing long term for San Francisco. We're looking at public private partnerships. I mean, I, I just think San Francisco is really leading the way and and could we do enough? You know, I mean, you can never do enough until everyone has a decent, clean, respectable place to live. But I think San Francisco is clearly leading the way to that. And oftentimes city issues and district issues are not one and the same. What are some of the biggest issues you feel are impacting your district? Well, the challenges of um, homelessness, um, of uh, folks that are um, in the kind of upper eight hate community, uh, making sure that we are providing resources to this population more aggressively than we have, making sure that we are cracking down on folks who might be 
breaking the law and making it really challenging for not just other homeless people, but for folks who live in the community, making sure we're activating that area so that families feel safe at being a part of that community. I think that's a huge challenge. The other challenge, one that I dealt with even before I became supervisor are the access to job opportunities, access to long-term job opportunities, and how do we prepare people who have never worked a job before in their entire lives for long-term job opportunity. What does it mean to show up on time? What does it mean to keep your pants pulled up and take off your hat and not talk back to your boss? What does all that mean? I think what we have done as a city is focus too much on, okay, where are the opportunities, local hire, which are all great programs, but the part that's missing is how do we get people prepared and how do we keep them employed? What does the long-term plan of job opportunities in San Francisco look like for local San Franciscans? And so I think those are probably two of the most pressing issues. And, and the city overall, of course, is housing. And it's one that we've all taken a lot of steps at trying to deal with. The city just recently enacted a two-year budget. And it always seems the city's dealing with a lot of complicated issues, including whether or not to raise fees and taxes and where to make cuts. How would you approach these tough choices? Well, fortunately, I've been in the nonprofit world. I've been actively engaged in the community. I know the programs that are actually effective in serving residents. I understand what the need is from firsthand experience. And so I just would want to make sure that I'm paying very close attention to detail, knowing exactly what these programs provide, knowing exactly what city departments, where the wasteful spending, how we can cut back so that we can make sure that we are funding the programs and the departments that need the money the most. So it, it's gonna be a really delicate balance. Um, I know I have a really challenging job ahead of me, but fortunately there are other um, supervisors on the budget committee that also have a firsthand experience. And, and so I, I think it's gonna be a tough budget process, but I think um, working together and looking at everything, um, whether it be visit site visits to programs or digging deep into folks' budget and talking to their uh, the people that they serve and a number of other things. It, it's going to take a, 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 a well-rounded approach at making these kinds of decisions and so I'm up for the challenge. Speaking of well-rounded approaches, how will you attempt to balance the needs of the district versus the needs of the city as a whole? And for me that's easy because San Francisco, the entire city is my home. I grew up here, I know uh, I went to Galileo in the marina. I hung out in the Bayview Hunters Point. My family lives all over the city. I mean, I can't do something that positively impacts District 5, but also negatively impacts San Francisco as a whole. So whatever decisions I make, I mean, it's a no-brainer. I have to make sure that it's going to positively impact the city as a whole. And, and, and that's just how I view every decision that I make through that particular lens. Let's talk a little about your district in particular. What do you hear about transportation from your constituents? Is there adequate Muni service? Well, it's funny that you mentioned Muni. <laughs> <laughs> and, and let me just say this, as someone who caught, I mean, we caught Muni, when I was growing up in the city, I mean, that's how you got around. And there were some real problems with Muni. I'm talking about just, I mean, the buses were always dirty, they were always packed. There were, I mean, there was just always some challenges and the city is growing clearly. And we need to look at all modes of transportation and how we allow people to move around the city uh, safely. And part of that is making sure that Muni is running well. And I know in particular, the in Judah has been a, a real challenge and we have um, come very close to securing revenue for an additional in Judah train as well as looking at express options in place where the, the most heavily used bus stops are. So looking at express trains and other alternatives to make sure that we're moving people around in a more efficient way so that they feel comfortable with using public transportation as their source of transportation. I think everyone in this city is prepared to, to bike, to use public transportation, to walk, to, to ride share, but we have to make it a lot more convenient for people. And, and, and it's gonna be, an ongoing improvement process because we're building more housing units, we're bringing more people into the city for job opportunities, but we're not increasing the needs around public transportation and transportation in general as significantly as we are doing those other things. So we're gonna have to take a really hard look at our priorities around transportation and really aggressively deal with those things. And speaking of safety, what do you hear about 
uh, crime in your district and are you happy with uh, what the police department is doing and how the city's dealing with crime? Well, uh, fortunately, because of the new academy classes, uh, we actually got uh, a number of additional officers in District 5. Um, that has definitely have, it's had a big impact on the district. I mean, we, we are way past the point of what we used to be, and that is a place where homicides were happen, happening regularly, uh, sometimes daily, sometimes weekly. And uh, sadly, we've lost a lot of young people, um, not only to uh, uh, that sort of violence, but to the criminal justice system. And it's a different district. And now uh, we're dealing with um, iPhone thefts and other th quality of life issues, home invasions, and things like that. And I think with the additional police officers um, and also the, the, the foot patrols and some of the things that seem to be happening, especially in the high crime areas like the lower hate, it's really changed things. It, it's more of a deterrent when you see police officers walking around, engaged with residents, engaged with business owners. It really helps to change the environment overall. So yes, we do have issues of crime, um, just like any, part of the, any other part of the city. I'm just really happy that it's not what it used to be, and I think it's a manageable thing, and we just have to do a little bit more and add some more academy classes, but also look at programs like SF Safe, which helps people to learn how to take care of themselves and to take care of each other as neighbors. We have to also make sure that we're providing opportunities to the perpetrators of these crimes and making sure that, of course, we're prosecuting people who are committing crimes, but more importantly, that we provide these opportunities before they get to the point where they are committing crimes. You mentioned the issue of homelessness as a big issue in your district. Um, how will you deal with the folks that hang out on Haight Street and the issue of homelessness? Well, I think that's a real, I mean, it's a citywide issue. And I think part of what we have to do is work together to deal with it, just like public safety. It's a work in progress. It's not something that you fix and then you move on. It's something that you continue to work with. I mean, San Francisco is an attractive place to people in general. So we're gonna get folks from all over, homeless, non-homeless. And I think part of the balance is making sure that social service agencies that provide support to homeless uh, individuals are available, that they have the resources they need, that they're held accountable to be out there and working and talking to folks who are interested in services. And the other issue is that, you know, we do have sadly, you know, an increase in crime in the area as a result of an increase in the homeless population. And so having a police presence, which we've had, Park Station um, has been really active in not only um, being out there and, and enforcing the law, but doing what police are not required to do, offering opportunities for services. And so I think San Francisco is an incredibly compassionate city. And I think our, depart our police department um, has been compassionate. I think our fire department has been compassionate. But also, uh, we have to make sure that we are really aggressive when making sure that folks are not breaking the law in terms of selling drugs, in terms of using drugs, in terms of just the kinds of things that happen when you break the law. I mean, people who are hanging out, they're just hanging out. There's nothing wrong with hanging out. I hung out a lot. Kids hang out, young people hang out, homeless people hang out. The question is when, when someone makes it, you know, more than just hanging out and it messes it up for everyone else and so we have to make sure as a city that we deal with those things appropriately but we also offer alternatives so that we're not just pushing the homeless issue from one place to the next but we're actually making sure we're taking care of people and offering them alternatives so it's it's a it's going to be a challenging issue and, and 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 an ongoing issue and one that i'm committed to working with the mayor's office to help uh, address and manage what are your thoughts on the city's economic development? Do you think we're on the right track? I think we're on the right track, but I think that um, unfortunately it allows the rich to get richer and it doesn't have a place for the middle class and the poor in our city. And I think that part of what we have to do as a city when people are interested in economic development opportunities in our city, they need to be a part of our city. And it's not just about giving out free gifts or giving out free turkeys or giving out free anything. It's about what type of job opportunities, what type of internships, what type of commitment are you going to have to the most vulnerable residents of our city? How are we going to impact lives? You're basically, this is a great economic opportunity maybe for you and the city, but how does this directly impact 
residents of the city. So I think we have to do a better job at making those connections. Let's talk a little about the issue of um, sports, the role of sports in the city's economic future. Are you supportive of the plans for the new Warrior Stadium? Stadium? I'm supportive of a plan that includes the residents of this uh, city. Um, specifically, with the Warrior Stadium, I think it could be a great opportunity for San Francisco, um, but I want to make sure that uh, in the agreement that there are some requirements that make sure that people are not just employed for construction opportunities, they're employed for management opportunities, they're employed for concession opportunities, they're employed with the Warriors team. I mean, there's a whole nother franchise of opportunities that exist as a result of, of this particular uh, team and who are they going after? What folks are they mentoring or, or what, what are the, who are the people that are gonna be long-term working with the establishment? And so I'm more interested in what the long-term relationship is between the Warriors and the community and, and, and not just, we're gonna build a stadium, we're gonna be here, we're gonna do our thing and everyone's gonna go home. It's what, what does this mean long-term and how do the re residents benefit um, and how are they connected to this great opportunity? So. To what degree do you feel the city should subsidize the team? I, I don't see the city subsidizing the team from my perspective, from what I've seen in terms of the deal, other than potentially the land which they will um, pay for um, eventually, maybe not the entire amount. But uh, I, don't th I don't think there are any plans for the city to give up anything financially from my perspective, um, other than potentially land that wasn't going to be used in the first place. Uh, but I, I, I appreciate the fact that the Warriors are focusing on private fundraising, and I prefer that they stick to that. Um, I don't think the city should be, um, with the situation we're in now, we should be really investing in that, and, and the Warriors seem to, have a, seem to be committed to privately fundraising for it, and I'm happy that they're stepping up to do that. It's an exciting, yeah. exciting change to see yes. them come here. Yes. Well, we're almost out of time, but um, are there any other issues that concern you that we haven't discussed or anything that you plan to concentrate on as your term as supervisor? I think one of the things that I really want to concentrate on is making sure that we are collaborating more because as a city we're growing, resources are being stretched thin, and it's going to be important that organizations collaborate, city departments collaborate, that we don't just operate in our own little departments, our own little sections of the city, but how do we come together to make sure that, for example, Upper Haight with a lot of great businesses, a lot of great opportunities for internships for young people to grow and work in these particular businesses. So my goal as supervisor is to begin the process of connecting people so that you know we have folks who are living in the community, working in the community, growing in the community, and supporting one another. It's, it's one of the things I care about most, and I'm really looking forward to bringing people together as supervisor. Great. Well, it looks like we're out of time, so we're going to have to wrap up. But thank you so much for joining us today on SFGov TV's Meet Your District Supervisor. Thank you for having me. <laughs> We've been talking to Supervisor London Breed from District 5. Watch for the next episode of Meet Your District Supervisor when we'll be back with another one of our 11 city supervisors. For SFGov TV, I'm Nona Melconian. <laughs>